Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are very excited uh, for this webinar on simulating motor drives in real time using the Plex RT box developed by Plexum. My name is James Truckle. I am a sales engineer with Plexum in Seattle, Washington, and today I'm joined by Plexum's engineer Chris Eberly, who will take you through a demo of a motor drive system simulation later in the webinar. So, a statistic that I recently learned at an IEEE event is that 55% of engineers today feel that in today's work environment, they are being required to do more with fewer resources. Many are working on multiple projects simultaneously, often with restraints on resources like time, budget, and perhaps engineering power. You know, there is also an increasing pressure to get products to market faster. Now, what this means is that development tools have really never been more important than they are today. So today, we will really try and show that the value Plexum simulation tools can provide improve product quality, and in doing so, bring forward launch dates. Plexum is a team of truly dedicated engineers with backgrounds in power electronics who have an understanding for the needs of today's engineer. We are constantly trying to innovate and develop tools that remain at the forefront of the industry while continuing to provide you know, very high quality support and service. With that, let me provide a brief background on the company and provide a framework for what we are going to discuss today. We will keep the webinar to approximately 40 to 45 minutes and please feel free to send us questions during the presentation and we will address them at the end. We also have some handouts on the RT box available for download via the GoToWebinar control panel. Plexum is an independent company headquartered in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, we are privately owned by our founders who were researching at ETH Zurich uh, and using uh, simulation tools that they felt were not well suited for what they were trying to do. Um, so they developed the Plex software, which has sold since 2002. Uh, we've grown quite a bit since then, now with uh, a U.S. headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a West Coast presence in Seattle, Washington. Uh, last year, we launched our RTBox platform, uh, which we will be focusing on today. Uh, we, have, uh, support, we are supporting academic and industry users in more than 50 different countries. Um, using uh, all of the tools that you'll see today. So the tools that you are going to see today are Plex Standalone, uh, which is our own version of Plex, uh, as opposed to Plex Block Set, which is a fully integrated version of Plex in MATLAB Simulink. Uh, but today we are going to be looking at Plex Standalone, the Plex Coder, and the Plex RT Box. So at the core of the Plex toolchain is the Plex circuit simulator. It was specially designed to model power converters, including the system in which they operate. Uh, it features, you know, some of the features include ease of use, ultra-fast simulation speed, numerical robustness, extensive and open component libraries, and support for multiple physical domains. So with Plex, an engineer can quickly sketch out a complete power conversion system. Once a Plex system model has enough fidelity, it can be used as a virtual system test bed. For example, the model can be utilized to test and develop the control software, either using our controls library or using C-script blocks or DLL blocks to execute embedded code. So moving on to Hill. During Hill testing, where the entire control hardware is tested in conjunction with a Plex system model, specialized real-time hardware is required. The Plex RT box was built entirely in-house to provide a fully integrated real-time environment for our users. It is a state-of-the-art real-time simulator based on a 1 gigahertz Xilinx Zinc system on chip with 64 digital and 32 analog I.O. signals. The box is very well equipped for hill testing of, comp of complex power converter systems. 
the RT box was designed to have uh, different functionality. And what I mean by this is, is that it can emulate the power stage in a true and traditional controller hardware in the loop fashion, or it can function as a controller and actually send digital signals to power hardware. So when we're talking about the performance of the Hill uh, of, of a Hill system, uh, due to the fast time constants inherent in power conversion system, we need to discret discretize with an appropriate step size, typically in the order of microseconds. It is very important. It is not, however, the only consideration. Now, when we're considering the performance of a Hill system, we need to think of things like calculation speed, uh, sample rate, uh, I.O. latency, signal resolution, and perhaps model implementation flexibility. These are all key characteristics when evaluating the Hill platform. With an integrated software and hardware environment, Plexum controls all of these factors, so truly offering a one-stop solution. When designing the RT box, we did a system optimization and chose to use a system on chip device. So we did this to maximize trade-offs of IO latency, numerical performance, and modeling flexibility. As mentioned, the RT box has 64 digital IO and 32 analog IO to interface with a variety of hardware systems. Excellent signal resolution can be achieved by using the latest generation of 16-bit ADC and DAC chips with sample rates of two mega samples per second. The digital capture module that you will see demonstrated soon can resolve uh, PWM signals at seven and a half nanoseconds. Currently, we are offering interfa interface boards to commonly used Texas instrument controllers. So these include the C2000 Launchpad and Control Card families. We do also have digital and analog interface boards available. So as, as, as I mentioned, due to the tight integration between our software Plex and the real-time simulator, we truly feel that we have one of the most user-friendly systems on the market. Configurations are made directly in the Plex schematic, so if you happen to already be a Plex user, then advancing to real-time simulations on the RT box will be a very natural progression. Plex has been used to simulate various motor drive systems, examine different failure modes, and design control schemes for over a decade. So not only do you have a very powerful hardware box to execute your model in real time, but you have a field-tested software package to work on. Any model you build in Plex can run on the RT box, including components from our thermal, magnetic, and, me and mechanical domains. The Plex Coder is a tool within Plex that you will see in this demo. It is where you will access execution settings, define your target, and generate code. Uh, currently, we are able to generate standalone C code for a variety of use cases. Obviously, with the release of our hardware system, the coder can target the RT box, but you can also have custom targets such as a specific embedded controller. We are providing the framework for you to develop your own target support packages, but we will also be supporting specific TI targets in an upcoming release. Uh, a license of Plex and the Plex coder are required to target the RT box for either emulating a plant or as uh, when it's acting as a controller. In addition to generating and uploading code to targets, uh, the Plex coder is going to be your control console for starting a real-time simulation and, as you'll see, see very soon, interacting with it. Uh, with that said, I will now hand you over to my colleague, Chris, who will give you a live demonstration of the software environment and the hardware capability of the box. All right, thank you, James. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris Everly, and I work with James in our Seattle office. So I'm gonna be demonstrating a typical user's workflow of going from the Plex software environment to running a real-time simulation. 
I will start by quickly introducing you to our Toolplex standalone that you can see here, uh, including the modeling environment and component libraries. We're going to be looking at a motor drive system model that has been designed for offline simulation on the desktop as well as online with the RT box. I'd like to quickly mention that I might use uh, some terminology uh, such as uh, offline or desktop model interchangeably. And what I mean by that is basically that the system is truly running on a simulation PC, simulation host here uh, with, with uh, perhaps the control system and or the plant running on a um, uh, computer, whereas uh, online or real-time means that the portion of interest is running actually on the real-time RTBox platform. So I will introduce the RTBox hardware and its interface to an actual controller. We're going to generate code for this uh, motor drive model and then run that code on the box. So let's get started at this point. Um, so here we see a Plex model and the component library browser. And the library itself, I'll speak to uh, quickly here. So it contains a complete set of blocks for modeling a power conversion system and its controls. That includes multiple physical domains that uh, James mentioned. So that includes uh, thermal, whereas here we are um, able to model the uh, thermal transitions and look at temperatures throughout uh, a network such as the junction uh, or uh, case or sink information, uh, temperature information. We can also model cooling systems and then um, use this to basically monitor uh, loss information and uh, efficiencies uh, all while sizing of the cooling system. We also have a magnetic modeling uh, library here where you see we can design complex core geometries. We can also include uh, nonlinear effects such as saturation and hysteresis in a core. And uh, finally, the mechanical modeling domain. So this comprises one-dimensional rotational and trans translational mechanics um, with various sources and sensors, uh, as well as components. So uh, again, including non-idealities in the electromechanical drivetrain, um, you can also model uh, machine loads, for example, and all of these can be uh, basically coupled together in a complete system model, uh, of course, with closed loop control, looking at uh, dynamics within the different physical domains. Um, I will uh, basically close all these and zero back in on electrical. Um, so not going to go into too much detail here, but I'll just mention quickly a uh, whole set of passive components, so R's, L's, and C's, including saturation and variation. Um, we have a library of uh, basically power semiconductors modeled as idealized switches, so this is one of the core features of Plex. Um, you see the library here. These lend themselves to very fast, very efficient, and robust simulation of uh, systems uh, containing switching converters. Uh, we also have a set of electric machines, so you see here the list. Um, so these are inbuilt into the Plex library um, and made available to the user. We also have a set of demo models, so that's accessible from this window menu here at the top. And um, we can filter then via the different domains I just mentioned to highlight some of the uh, specifics or by topology type. Um, and I'm going to choose here, obviously, motor drives. And uh, so this um, set of examples includes different machine types, uh, different control methodologies, uh, but also some analyses, so such as uh, modeling failure modes, for example, here. And um, we also might be interested in tying, for example, machine saturation data from an FVA, or finite element analysis simulation, into a Plex model. Um, so again, these are also made readily available, uh, built into Plex. So let's dive more into our ready-made example here. Um, what you're seeing then in the yellow uh, schematic is a pre-built desktop Plex model of a complete motor drive system. And uh, we have a subsystem that contains the plant. Um, notice that this subsystem has a thicker black uh, border. And what that means is that the subsystem has uh, basically been enabled as an atomic subsystem whereby it is uh, able to generate uh, embedded code for the RT box. So basically code generation is enabled for the RT box for this uh, part of the complete model in, in this example. 
Um, we also have a feedback control system here. Uh, that includes a discretized synchronous frame regulator, a space vector, space vector modulator. Uh, if I double click on that, this is a built-in block in the library. So you can see the block parameters available to the user. It's using a symmetrical uh, modulation scheme in this case. Uh, I can also show then right click looking under the subsystem mask. The uh, digital synchronous frame regulator basically is built up with uh, primitives in the uh, for, available from the Plex control component library. Um, so this is essentially a custom uh, controller that um, we built in-house. Um, very good. So uh, let's also just note then some of the system level specifications. We are commanding in this case tuner amps RMS of reference current in the DQ frame. Let's go into the controller. Um, also as a set point to the modulators, a 400 uh, volt uh, DC bus. And um, finally, a uh, modulation frequency of 20 kilohertz. So um, these are, you know, very realistic operating conditions. And we'll talk kind of more about the application when we look at the, the plant. So um, let's open the plant subsystem now that, that uh, as I said, contains the inverter and electric machine. So we see that here by double clicking. Um, so this is the complete drive system, including the DC bus, the three-phase inverter, and our permanent magnet synchronous machine. Um, these were all, this is completely designed using the uh, components from our electric modeling domain library. And um, we can see here that uh, all the connections are made with black wires. So that's uh, representing electrical uh, connections or wires carrying currents. Additionally, in the model, we have uh, various green connections um, throughout the schematic. And uh, these basically uh, show the transfer of signal information. So that could be um, such as for controlling the gate signals uh, to drive the gates of the IGBTs or uh, for measuring, for example, voltage um, and uh, currents or machine shaft angles, et cetera. Uh, in this particular model, we also include a rot rotational speed source from our mechanical domain. And that is then coupled onto uh, the machine shaft via flange. So in this domain is represented here by purple connections or physical mechanical connections. Um, we also have a, a scope in the model and uh, some um, uh, display blocks. I'll come back to that. But I do want to mention uh, at the periphery of the model, we have these rectangular blocks with round edges. And uh, these are part of the RT box component library. So this is part of the uh, software support package for our RT box target. And these blocks are used to assign the communications between the device under test and the real-time system. So uh, these IOs basically make a simple association between a signal in the Plex model and uh, a pin in the actual RT box hardware connectors. And so what this means is that setting up the communication to and from um, you know, the uh, device under test and the uh, simulated environment in the real-time system is all done in a, in a Plex model. There's no external uh, lookup tables or files or anything that need to be included. Um, very intuitively uh, housed in one format. And um, uh, obviously with uh, this uh, specific demonstration then in the controller hardware and the loop simulation where the device under test being an actual controller sitting outside the box, the uh, IOs will be used such that digital signals are sent from the controller back to the plant here captured by the RT box. So again, we can imagine shortly this model will run on the box. And uh, for example, we'll capture a digital signal such as for the PWM signals to go into the box and then from uh, the box to the outside back to the controller. We will uh, measure from voltages, uh, voltages and currents, for example, from meters and sensors within the virtual plant uh, passed back as analog signals. So we see uh, a bunch of those here as well. So each IO block um, allows the assignment of the channels of uh, the various connectors. So if I click on the PWM capture, you see the digital input channels uh, associated with that. And um, also with the analog signals, we can also have the ability to uh, do scaling and offset um, on the input and output. Um, I already mentioned then the DC voltage and commanded current values. 
Uh, but just to um, kind of frame the application a bit more clearly, we can think of this as a traction drive, such as a small electric vehicle drive or auxiliary drive. Um, let's double click then on the machine parameters. Um, we could uh, maybe consider this uh, to be based on a motor very similar to a Remy motor. Um, it's a very highly salient embedded magnet synchronous machine. Um, so here we have the machine block parameters window. We can look at the stator circuit parameters, the number of um, pole pairs, for example. And um, to, to just highlight then the saliency, we can see the stator inductances are shown to differ by a factor of two. Um, they are also in the microhenry range, while the uh, stator resistance is on the order of milliohms. Um, I can also show then uh, that many of our uh, machine uh, components contain several different implementations. So in this demonstration, we're using the rotor reference frame, um, but uh, we, we have uh, more than one in some cases. And furthermore, we can also, again, right click look under the mask and actually see the implementation. So at this, at this level, we see our um, three-phase uh, stator connections coming into the, the electrical connections coming into the electric model. Um, we also have then a, uh, our mechanical uh, connection, the flange to the external of the machine here. And um, inbuilt is associated inertia and friction of the shaft, uh, torque source, and um, speed and angle of the rotor fed back to the electrical model. And so if we look under that, we actually see the um, uh, machine circuit and uh, basically all of the uh, implementation is open to the user. They can um, verify it, modify it, make their own uh, models based on what we provide. And then in the case where we have multiple implementations, you can see um, basically a different subsystem implementations here also available to view by the user. All right, um, last thing we can speak to then is um, the inverter itself. So the inverter legs are modeled using um, these IGBT half bridges. So this is not two individual devices, but actually a module. And so if we go back to the electric library here, um, we see that there is a set of power module components in the library. Um, including choppers and uh, half and full bridges. And uh, each of these, if I double click on this particular one here, um, have two configurations. And uh, I want to spend a little time explaining this. So um, the first one, it uses, uh, it's called a switch implementation where idealized switches uh, are built under the hood, accepting instantaneous logic gate signals as their control inputs. Um, but also then we have a sub-cycle average and so not a, uh, a true averaged model, it is a switched model, but um, sub-cycle average basically uh, based on controlled voltage and current sources where the gate signals can either be instantaneous or time averaged. And this version of the um, each of the power modules can be uh, basically used in conjunction with our PWM capture block. And uh, I showed that here briefly. The PWM capture block, uh, basically built into the RB, R, RT box, has uh, the ability to um, resolve PWM signals under 10 nanoseconds. Uh, 7.5 nanoseconds, as James mentioned. So um, with the subcycle averaging, we are actually able to oversample uh, PWM signals for maximum accuracy. So those, uh, all three legs of the inverter are using that format in this case. Okay, so um, I should mention as well an offline simulation has actually already been completed for the model uh, with the controller model in Plex here. And um, we can actually view then uh, signal traces captured in the Plex scope. And so we, uh, with this particular model, we see that uh, includes the switching waveforms here. So that's coming directly from the PDUM. Uh, we also can look at the uh, stator currents and then um, the theta value coming from the output of the resolver, so the machine shaft angle. And uh, what, so what I'll do then is um, click on the scope. And um, this is our Plex scope where we can monitor uh, waveforms and do analyses on uh, the waveforms of interest. So I can basically pan in uh, both axes um, in, uh, in magnitude in the y direction, uh, but also in time. 
uh, we can zoom in on, on the waveforms and uh, look at the um, dynamics. So we see uh, the whole set of switching signals here. I could also spread these to show uh, with high resolution the different waveforms. We see the ripple current and the stator currents. Um, and uh, at the bottom plot, as I said, uh, the rotor angle. So that's basically cycling as expected from negative pi to pi. Uh, so this is a trace then that we have saved from um, an already run uh, model with the offline version and um, that's saved here as a trace. Um, very good. So uh, last thing is um, using the probe component built in the Plex library. We are actually able to drag any components into this window and monitor uh, signals that are embedded into that device, uh, whether it be you know, voltage across a capacitor, or in this case for the machine, the rotational speed and torque, and um, pulling those out. So for this particular uh, model where we drove the machine at, uh, if you can see here, 2,500 RPMs, the uh, system developed about uh, just under uh, 12 kilowatts of mechanical power. All right, uh, so I think with uh, now some background provided on the model and the application, we should uh, move on to the fun part. So I'm going to turn on a webcam. And uh, at this point, you have a, uh, a smaller window at the top um, that's showing a video of a RT box on my desk here. And uh, there's a, a line that actually separates then the video of the RT box with the screen share of uh, my uh, PC desktop. And you are welcome to move that line up and down to minimize and maximize the size of each. Uh, I'm gonna kind of be going back and forth here a little bit. So um, try and uh, stay with me as I, I do that. Um, so the uh, RT box then um, you see here is connected to my host computer via the network. And the front of the box then contains the interface connections for analog on the left and digital on the right uh, for inputs and outputs. Um, this blue board here is a uh, Delfino control card. So it's an F2837 dual core control card from Texas Instruments. And uh, I want to make clear that um, we have pre-programmed field-oriented control algorithms with flux weakening very similar to uh, the controller design in, in the offline model, um, but the code for the embedded uh, controller is, is already pre-flashed on here. Um, so when I power this up, this will actually be able to run the, uh, the algorithms um, from the, the full control system. The green board then at the bottom has been developed by Plexum. So this is an interface or breakout board, and all this is doing is basically rerouting signals from the controller hardware to the box itself. Um, having said that, it also has additional connections. So we see here on the left, we have BNC cables, um, such as for data acquisition, connecting to an oscilloscope, um, or we might be interested in uh, interfacing to a communications network, such as using a CAN bus. Um, and uh, people who then have uh, complete custom control systems uh, of their own, um, can uh, basically build a, uh, a custom interface board that really just reroutes signals or maybe pulls off uh, signals of interest that they're interested in monitoring externally. Okay, so I'm gonna reach to the back of the box and flip the power switch at the back of the unit. And when I do that, we see a green power light comes on on the front. So then um, returning to the computer, I want you to um, reconsider then this model that we see here as a virtual dynamometer or a motor test stand um, where we're going to basically uh, run the plant of the model in a real-time system and in doing so we now neglect uh, this control system. This control system is now inactive and we will actually work with or communicate to the actual controller I, I showed here on, on the bench. Um, so let's go to the Plex coder menu and initialize then the real-time simulation. So the Plex coder window uh, has uh, several tab menus. Um, starting with the general one, we basically choose a system of interest. So this is our model FOC control card. And um, you'll notice what's available then is the subsystem inside that is uh, what we've been looking at. So basically PMSM and inverter 
that I said as uh, designated here by the thicker black border has been um, selected as an atomic subsystem for code generation to targeting the RT box. And uh, this first tab here, general settings, uh, I won't go through every single one, but um, the important one here at the top is the discretization step size. So obviously, um, in order to run the model in real time, we do have to discretize it. And um, basically, you need to uh, choose a value uh, that is an appropriate step size to accommodate the calculation time required by the box. And so that's based on um, the size of your system that you're modeling, uh, its complexity, or uh, could also refer to kind of the dynamics or the various time constants in that. Uh, in this particular case, we have chosen a value of five microseconds. Um, should mention that the box can support um, as low as one microsecond today. Uh, probably we'll be able to get smaller as well in the near future. Um, but the limit today being one microsecond, but um, that is tuned, uh, the, the step size is tuned again as a number of, uh, based on a number of factors as my colleague James described earlier. And uh, so what we decided was that the five microsecond step size gave uh, high enough uh, fidelity to the waveforms um, while also being uh, fast. So um, moving on then to the second uh, tab, we uh, see that we can actually choose to inline specific parameters into our embedded code that can be then tunable for whenever the real-time system is in operation. Um, so let's just focus on one to start here. The rotational speed is referring to this block in the model. And so when I uh, actually build the, the embedded code for the model and run it on the box, we can actually then have access to this parameter, this value of speed, and, and actually tune that um, for the real-time model uh, as long as we maintain connection to the box from the host and uh, view the uh, resulting you know changes in the system from that. Um, so a few have been inlined here and then on the third tab for the target um, basically we can generate uh, generic or standalone C code um, that can be then uh, used on any um, you know, custom control scheme. We also have the ability to allow you to create your own custom targets. And then uh, obviously with the advent of the Plex RT box, we have built in an option to target that directly. Uh, below that then you have access to the target configurations. Um, essentially that's uh, several different uh, voltage ranges for the analog and uh, digital IOs. So we provide here um, some common uh, voltage ranges for those. And then lastly, you see here, enable external mode. So we're gonna come back to that, but that refers to this last tab um, at the end. So uh, then we will uh, build the model. So I'm gonna click on this button here. And uh, what's happening then, the plant model is discretized, as I mentioned. Um, code is then generated for the discretized model, compiled, and then uploaded onto the box. Um, process only takes a few seconds to complete, and actually if you see back in the video of the RT box, um, we have a blue light running on the, uh, in, uh, blue light coming on on the box in the front indicating that the RT box is now running. So that was, uh, I don't know, five or six seconds maybe to complete, um, which is part of the beauty of our integrated software and hardware approach um, where everything uh, is really um, coupled under one framework here. Um, Good, so obviously there wasn't a whole lot of fireworks at that stage, um, but what I'd like to show next hopefully is very helpful in helping to, uh, to have you understand what's currently going on in this virtual test bench now. So at this point, I'm actually going to uh, turn off the webcam so we can now just focus on the Plex model. Uh, typically, a user might have some uh, external oscilloscope or data acquisition system connected to your breakout board. Um, but in lieu of that for the demo today, we actually are able to do a lot now in Plex. So I will, um, I, again, I mentioned one powerful feature of the RT box framework is the external mode of the coder. So click on this tab. Um, again, this allows the user to interact with the real-time system using the desktop model. Uh, so what that means is parameters can be tuned on the fly, um, but also we can bring back signals from the real-time system into any scope that's in the model. Uh, so in this model, we had our one scope. We saw waveforms uh, previously um, generated from an offline version of the model. 
but actually you're going to be able to now pull these uh, same signals into the, the scope from the real-time system. So let me connect to the box and um, once we're connected we will then want to basically uh, choose some trigger controls here. Um, so we see here that there is a, a manual or an auto trigger so I'm going to actually activate the auto trigger and uh, when we do that we now have um, basically a second trace overlaid from the real-time system. Um, so we can change the trigger level manually, or, uh, punching in numbers here, um, but actually we're uh, triggering then off the resolver angle. So if I bring this down to zero, what we see is that these waveforms are very nicely correlated and laid over one another. So um, pretty, uh, pretty impressive um, correlation here between the version with the controller built on the Plex model, the first one, and uh, the version on the RT box. And, and if it's not completely lined, it's really just because um, the trigger is, is just slightly off from zero. So I could even change that and uh, we'll get closer. So um, just to uh, simplify things a little bit here, I'm gonna just hide then um, the offline model and uh, zoom out and we could even stop spreading these signals so that they're not quite as confusing. But again, um, with the real-time system, we're discretized at five microseconds. We see the switching waveforms. We see the um, ripple on the current with the subcycle cycle average version of uh, the power modules for the inverter and the rotor angle. Um, we might notice then our fundamental frequency of our stator currents and um, the the rotor angle as well. And I mentioned that because. Um, we want to typically also interact with the model in this external mode. So um, what I will show then is uh, maybe changing the speed uh, from 2,500 RP 2, RPMs as it is currently. And if I change this gain from half to one, we will jump up to 5,000 RPMs. And if I move that aside, we'll be able to quickly see the change. So if you focus then, as I click now one, um, we see a doubling of the fundamental frequency in the stator currents, the rotor angle, the, the cycling nature of that also um, is twice as fast as expected. And um, so we're basically uh, be able to tune things in the model and, and seeing then the waveforms pulled back from the real-time system. Um, so it, we, we now have a machine that's producing uh, about 24, 25 kilowatts of mechanical power at uh, 5,000 RPMs. And um, obviously this is just one quick uh, example, but using the external mode, you could imagine running various test scenarios, uh, such as fault conditions in the inverter, uh, maybe there would be a, a droop at a, at a load or DC voltage in this case, we might have different loads on the machine that we want to simulate, uh, you'd have different test cases. So uh, essentially we can create and observe abnormal faults here that we might not want to do with a real motor test setup and uh, we could look at things that might not even be easily measurable such as uh, in the machine or temperature probes etc. So that kind of include, concludes my demo at this point. Um, I'd like to then uh, hand the mic back to James to wrap up and then we're going to field some questions. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much Chris. Make myself the presenter here. Um, this does conclude uh, our brief demonstration of the RT box. Uh, we really hope that this has been helpful for both uh, existing, u existing Plex users joining us and uh, people that might be new to our tools. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the Plex tool chain and, and how it can be used for uh, validation and verification of an embedded controller. controller. The workflow to go from a desktop model in Plex to a real-time simulation is very intuitive. Getting the real-time model to run it successfully and then being able to interact with it is both fast and easy. At this point, we would like to thank everyone once again for their participation and spend a few minutes answering questions that have been sent to us. Thank you very much.